live from Trinidad and Tobago. Welcome to Connections 50 Plus Wednesday's live show. I am Terry Ann Joseph Rathwaite. And I am Jennifer Gibbons Joseph. afternoon welcome welcome one and all it is wednesday december 9th it is six o'clock in the afternoon and we are on wednesday alive with connections 50 plus i am terryon joseph Braffitt, co-creator of connections 50 plus and as always with me yes and i am jennifer gibbons joseph the other co-creator of connections 50 plus Good evening to you all, everyone in the Caribbean, and of course, Trinidad and Tobago. Yes, yes Terry. And I have to do my roll call, Jennifer. So, the whole of the Caribbean, Grand Bahama, most northerly, Belize in the west, Barbados in the east, all the islands in between, and Guyana Nation State in the south. And yes, Jennifer, I got the most southerly village in Guyana. So, probably... Probably, they're not getting Gael, but somebody in Georgetown, if you go down there next, give them a message for me. Masse Canary. Masse Canary. Wow. All the people in Masse Canary, <laughs> which I think is about three miles away from the Venezuelan border, the Brazilian border, sorry. <laughs> so to all our Caribbean friends seeing us via Gael on YouTube, Facebook, welcome. So welcome. Jack this is a special time. We are nearly in the middle of December. Jeez. Uh -huh. And Christmas will come and everything. And, you know, we've been looking on at all kinds of crazy things seem to be happening both here and, well, well we, our, our big neighbor to the north with their politics is a different kind of story altogether. <laughs> we will fix that. But, um... We've been seeing some stressful situations with regard to domestic violence or gender, let me say gender-based violence, especially amongst young women. That is, that is pretty stressful for us, you know? And um, we were chatting and saying that it's such a multifaceted issue. Many people, I suppose in despair and frustration, turn to the police, but in so many situations, the police are really the, at the end of the chain. When a crime yeah. is committed, the police can act. But so much of prevention and management of, of violence is, is first in the home, in the individual, and in the community. You know? And Terry Ann, it's more, it's prevalent. I, I don't know. I should, from reading, I don't know if more now is being publicized more yes. and with the event of everybody have a, a smartphone with a, a camera on it so you know we are more aware but you know I think it has a lot to do and say before it reached the, the state of, of going to the police is that we ourselves in the neighborhood you know communities we have to check ourselves because um, Terry and I grew up hearing it comments like if you heard if your neighbor if there's a fight in the home um you will hear comments after especially against the, the the woman you may hear you know she looked for that because she always going all over the place and leaving the children home or it's always against the woman looking for what she bought and the excuse to the man would be either Oh, well, you know, he came home drunk yeah. or he was too tired and she didn't cook for him or he didn't get food or he want to sleep and he tried making too much noise in the head and she should have kept them quiet. And these type of remarks always against what the woman should have done mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and uh, defending the, the man because, again, the thinking is that the man is the head of the household. The bread. You know, he's a breadwinner. So he's in charge. So, and 
you should obey your, you, you know, you obey your husband, obey the, the well, and then I want to use the word husband, whether it's come along or not. Yes. But you have this thing with obey the husband. I'm not going to read any Bible or, or um, quote any it's verse in the Bible. Yes, it never said obey in that sense. You know, so I'm not going to, because I am saying that because some people will quote the, the, the verse and want to, to you condone certain things. But yes, and when you grow up with that, hearing that, even the children within the household, hearing that, that the mother being blamed for certain things and hearing that she deserves that, that sort of treatment, the girls growing up believe, of many of them, that that's the way they should be treated. Hmm. And, and we were chatting and hoping, well, saying, you would think with education, um, you know, a certain exposure that now the thinking will be different. Mm -hmm. But Terry and I'm not too sure, you know, mm -hmm. because yeah. I watched that last episode where um, with that young girl who they claim, I'm just repeating from what I, you know, what I've read, mm -hmm. that she's 14 and this gentleman is 44 and, and you know, what they observed. And there was a lot of, of, of talk going on why he trying to get in the car, etc. And when you get the, the other report after saying that, okay, she didn't want to give any, say anything against the, the, the gentleman. I don't know if they found her mother, whoever, her, her caregiver, whoever the adult was in her home also didn't want to give any evidence. It says to me, that they believe that is the best situation for them. And they have some, within them, fear or feel that is what they deserve, mm -hmm. you know? And scared to be protected, to, to, to go against that, that gentleman for fear of whether, you know, reprisals, as they say. Mm -hmm. um, so my thing is this. I believe if the victim know that they would be protected and not protected temporarily because they don't want to, yes, everything okay. And people, Ray, Ray, she said this and they're going back home and then they are suffering after. Mm -hmm. So they, they must know, the victims must know that they are really being protected and they are not being seen just as victims and that they deserve, you know, whatever is happening to them. Mm -hmm. So um, I've said that because I am not too sure, Tarion, that we have moved forward much from, from before yeah. in, in, in terms of the domestic violence. And the thing about it, Jennifer, I think that is one side of the equation. Um, if in fact you have a victim and if a victim yeah. is under threat, and I think in our situation today with the children's authority, with the family court, I think I used to work in social welfare some time ago. Yeah. And I think we are oh a hundred times better where dealing with victims are concerned. The problem is when there isn't a victim and when everyone is a willing party to some activity. So, yeah. you, th th and I think that's where we have onlookers looking at a situation, perceiving there's a victim, and then when the different agencies, be it the police, be it the children's authority, be it the officers of the court, be it social welfare, go in to investigate, there is no one to corroborate a story. Yes, nobody stepping forward. The victim has nothing to say. The mother has nothing to say. And we talked about the issue of in our public hospitals, every day an underage person delivers a child. Or that is statutory rape. The nurses and the social welfare workers and the medical social workers can come. Who is the father? No name. No name. The mother comes and escorts them out. But you, 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 you see, it is not, there's no criminal act for yes. the, the 
the mother of an underage mother of a child or her mother. Well, now you have the sexual offenses with the child. You have to report it. So probably now parents can be held accountable. But the, the, where, the, where there is a true victim, I think there is recourse. And the courts have really, I mean, yes, you have the slips with the protection orders and so on. But when you look at the number of cases that go through our family courts and so on, victims generally are better off. And yes, there are cases where you have some problems. But the other side of the coin is where there is no victim, but there is willing participation by adults to use children in an exploitative yes. way. And when mm -hmm. children are willingly part and parcel, whether it is for economic gain, whether it is for social status or whatever it is. And I think in those instances, one of the one of the ways and we were talking about this and i posted the other day sometimes before we reach to the man dragging the girl in the car and you don't you're wondering what is going on so subtly we look at what we post on social media what we yes. share what the kinds of jokes we laugh at you know some really really misogynistic kinds of jokes that that put women in a position and or give men the right to talk about women in a certain way. Mm -hmm. um, I think, you know, they say evil con continues when good men do not, good people do nothing. Yeah. One of the main champions that have to step up now is, and it's happening, it's the men raising their voices because they know bad behavior. They will spot bad behavior earlier than any woman can, I think. Because they know the, the psychology behind it. And, and when they see the attitudinal behavior, like some people write and say, your partner come in the man, he talk and he go, so and so the woman, and he goes, so and so the woman. And you sit down and you say, oh God, boy, yeah, boy, she bad. You know, intervene because when he leave the bar with a few, he going to so and so the woman. Yes. And then everybody is crying. So we really, really have to take a look at, try to divorce the, the act and then look how we as people in community and family, what yeah. we what we allowing as normal. And we saying, well, you know, he don't mean nothing, but she don't mean nothing. And, and really creating that cycle, reinforcing. I agree, and Terry, and as you say, as family, because which when you grow up in a household who watch the pardon, I mean, men say we only talk about the woman abuse, but they have the men being abused. Mm -hmm. But watch any one of their parents abusing each other or abuse, abuse. abusing the other one. Yeah. And that's what they see. That's what they grow up. It's very hard after that mm -hmm. for a psychologist or teacher or police <laughs> to change that mindset. You know, it is very difficult. Yeah, and if I especially if you're benefiting. Oh, yes. Well, in many cases, it's because of that. In financial situations, um, when, you know, you listen to some of those who have been victims speak, mm -hmm. and they would say it's because of their financial situation at the time, that was the person taking care of them, they couldn't do any better, et cetera, et cetera. So the, those are, you know, issues with any society that we need to, you know, be that's aware of. That's on that level. All right. Let, let's come up a notch. Where yeah. we're dealing with poverty. We're dealing with, I want shoes. I want hair. I want nails. Yeah. I, want, I want clothes. I want a sugar daddy. Eh? Where it isn't poverty, but just... I want somebody to take care of me and I don't mind trading a few favors and then favors escalate as they go along. Mm -hmm. And then the person who these, these adults end up being role models, some young person is looking at them and saying, but look at the wonderful life they live. You know, it's like the young person looking at the drug lord. Look at the lovely life they live. I mean, yeah. what's the big deal? Who is getting hurt? So we really, really have to take stock of our own circles and look 
carefully at what's going on in our circles and what we are condoning or turning a blind eye to. And, and that, that's really, as you say, perpetuating this, this really, really sad situation. Yes, Darian, and I'm glad you, yes, it's not just for those in poverty, yeah. but we have a lot of persons in society, professionals, who have been, you know, condoning that type of behavior, they themselves being abused, and, you know, um, you have the mental abuse, you have the physical abuse, because sometimes we just talk about the physical abuse, but the psychological abuse, you, you, you know, these are, are ways that, especially those who don't want to, as they say, leave marks on the skin or, or be able to be, um, you know, they leave any evidence of, of that abuse, um, find other ways. And we, yeah, yeah. And yes, we have to be aware and, and be able to speak openly and not judge when, we have a friend or a colleague sharing their pain that we should really, you know, empathize and see where we can extend a hand as against judging. You know, we tend to be very judgmental in situations like that. Mm -hmm. So for me at this stage, Sarian, is to help in any way we can and as Connections with the Plus, um, this is what we're doing. We're chatting about it and we are open to, you know, offer our services in any way we can to help persons live a better quality life. And one thing I will say and, and, and that I'm so proud of, and I mean, by next week we'll be able to share more about something wonderful that's happening with yeah. us. Um, but, you know, the thing is change. Mm -hmm. If you've lived a life that's, that's and you, you, it's now a habit, it's your culture, it's very easy for someone on the outside to say, change, change, do better, yeah. do different. But how do you develop the, the, the mechanisms to say, all right, what direction do I turn in and how do I move forward? And while we can't, we are not therapists, we are not psych yeah. psychologists or psychiatrists, but certainly we are coaches. And that's why I am really, really so happy with the work that we've done through our assessments. All of them done, developed by Dr. Nita Joseph and by Maria Elias and, and even with yourself on the financial side, at least for people who are willing to do that self-examination to determine what steps forward to make a better life. And I'm, we do yeah. not deal with people who are in the violence and it's not that, you know, in a different level. We refer them to the therapists, you know, those need therapists. You can at least um, find a way out. There, there is help. There is help. Whether it's here or whether it's with professionals and whether it's state clinics and individuals, once you know you need help, there are places to go. Um, so, and that's why I think victims are getting help. The problem is when it's not a victim, it is someone who is getting an advantage from abusing another and the two people are accomplices in, in, in whatever mess that is going on. But it's sad and we, have to, we all have to play our individual parts. But on the good side, Jennifer, there is news that the coronavirus is, is the vaccines are rolling out and they will be in Trinidad. We, I, I would just ask the question wondering what are individuals' views on taking the vaccine because our cohort, the 5.8G cohort, is <laughs> high risk. Yes. <laughs> they're saying they're going to be prioritized. Are we ready to go and line up to get our shots? <laughs> <laughs> so Tarian, I will leave that as a question to yeah. your, our followers, 5.8G followers, to answer. I don't want to answer. I'm not sharing my answer on that. That'd be a bit controversial. Um, so yes, tell us what you think about it. Are you going to go and line up to get that shot? Yes. Are you signing up? We would love to hear from you on that. Yes. Yes. So, Jennifer, today our topic is 
personal transitions on the stage of stages. So audience, let me give you a little setup. You all might remember, I don't know, it might have been a couple of months ago, we have to check the date. We had a lovely chat with, we had Dr. Alison Gibbons and we were talking to Randy Sanka, Kester Hamlet, and well, Dr. Gibbons, and they all represented the three sub-stages that are on the third act of life. Mm -hmm. 50 to 60, 60 to um, 70, 70 to 80. And each one of them required their own transition. So, yeah. listen, listen, listen. Jennifer and I are both, within the next four months, are going to make serious transitions onto other stages. You know, at the end of this week, I end my 59th year. I turn 59 and begin my 60th year. So I yes. start a 12-month journey to 60 next year. And yes, 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 I'm 60 next year. <laughs> and in April, Jennifer ends her 69th year, becomes 69, and enters her 70th year, beginning her 12 month journey. So we thought it would be really, really cool to yeah. interview each other on how we are approaching and thinking about this transition and this move. So today's session is going to be really personal and you're going to be hearing a lot of, we have not planned, we don't know what we're going to ask. <laughs> <laughs> so, Jen. And you know what, Terry, before we start, you want to ask our followers, you can also send, you can ask us anything. You put in, you know, post. What would you like to ask us? Yeah. So as I question Terry Ann and Terry Ann questioned me, we invite you to question us also. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so you and we go along. Okay. I want to start the ball rolling because Terry Ann is a younger one, <laughs> but also her birthday comes first. Yeah. So on Friday, we're going to be celebrating Terry Ann's birthday. Okay. And before I question Terry Ann, Terry Ann, I want to say that this recently i heard what was it there was a show one of those shows going on and the person this one girl was about 47 mm -hmm. and she was saying she was complaining about her changes in her body yeah. so it was really on health it was a topic on health and she was complaining about the changes in her body and her comment was why didn't anybody tell me about this I am heading to 50 and all these different changes happening to me and it's just coming as a shock to my body. If I was told, and she, this is what this, I'm just repeating what she said. If I was told about all these changes in my body and what to expect at 50, then she said she would have approached it differently. And I, I thought that was so, you know, into what we do. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And here we are. Talking about connections, 50 plus, preparing people to move on to that stage, which is the 50 plus, mm -hmm. then to move on to the 60 plus, and then to the 70 plus. And so many people sometimes say, you know, we know. Yeah. But we don't think you know. <laughs> All right. So let me start with Terian. So Terian entering, as we say, that 60th stage. Terian, how do you feel about that? Fantastic. I, yeah. I fantastic. I honest to goodness, I have never had an issue with my age. I've never okay. and um I don't know, probably I look good for my age, but I have enjoyed every stage of my life, Jennifer. Okay. I, I was a child, I was a teenager, I did what had to be done. I had twenties, thirties career, so that I I look forward to calling myself 60. I, I think this 12 months, all right, I'm going to be 59. I think it's an inconvenient number. I, I, I can deal with 58. I, I want to be 60. What is 59? <laughs> so I have decided that the, the entire year, every month is going to be, it's like 12 steps, my 12 step program to finally yeah. <laughs> get into that age where I get to ride the bus, the bus free. I could go to Bago free. I could, 
all kinds of benefits accrue, but also I think there's a lot of status that comes with being a well-kept 60-year-old woman in this world. And I want to join that club. But Terry Ann, do you recall anyone telling you about what it's like being on this stage? Um, I think, I, I don't know that anyone sat down and said, this is what it is like. And I've had the good fortune of being around older women at different times. And, okay. and also, I've also been a very, I've also been very conscious of me and my body and my health. And, and when I was younger, I was always into dancing or sports or some kind of thing like that. So I was always conscious of what's going on with my body. And as I got older, um, so I anticipated on you. So when the creaks and the aches and the you get up and the knee just sees up and you have to you know just <laughs> or your back just not, not right or your, your mind just goes um i take it it's part of the experience you know but on the other side on the other side of those physical things jennifer i'm not easily phased by a lot of stuff and and i i think um my i think of my character, of the things that I can do and that I have accomplished. The aches and the pains and the creaks and the... <laughs> they come with it. So, but I've had many discussions with people about changes as they go along. And I uh -huh. think I have just extracted from them and used those conversations to anticipate. And I think everybody's aging process is different. So I always take a, put a spoon, a pinch of salt when somebody says, this is what will happen to you because it happened to me. I, I and, um, to take it as information, but not necessarily as what will happen to me. Terry Ann, we were chatting this week with a creative, a male 50 plus, mm -hmm. and he made a comment which had me thinking, and, and I believe it is, he's quite correct. Mm -hmm. And he was saying he has found persons who 50 plus, or let's say like you entering into that second stage, and we say second stage is 60 plus. Don't want, don't really think like 60. They don't think old. They want to feel within themselves that they're still, they're still 50, let's say, at least they're 10 years younger than they really is. How do you feel about that in your thinking? Do you feel you're thinking like a, a, a 50 year old? Well, you know, that's an interesting question, Jennifer, because I, I look at it this way. As I said before, I am looking forward to being 60. So I, I have no problem saying I'm 59 on Friday and next year I'm going to be 60. Next December I'm going okay. to be 60. Because I think a lot, of the, 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 so a lot of stuff comes with that. However, I think the stereotypes of what is old applies to a different, not people like me. I have, I have, I love to, to encounter new experiences and meet new people and have new ideas. I like that. And yeah. for me, that is not a definition of old. I think you get old when you stop. I don't think it, yeah. old is associated with an age. So I think in this generation, because we are, in, involved in so much change, we are open, so we're not like the old person of 30 years ago. So a 60-year-old 30 years ago would have been sitting down knitting. But a 60-year-old today, uh-uh. <laughs> so as I say, the 60 now is a new 50. Yeah, you know, and I, 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 I personally tend to resist that because I, I don't want to hide my age. I, I, I am very proud to say this is what 60 is for me. I look at me, I read 60. I'm a whole 12 months ago. <laughs> but um, but it, it says, I, I, I think, I know a lot of people have a problem with owning the number and they don't, yes. they don't say this is my age. And I think that then they, they look at the current 50-year-olds and they try to do what the current 50 and 40-year-olds doing. If mm -hmm. I try to do that right now, I'll get into trouble. But I think I can do so much more and, and still have fun 
And I think it is my attitude that is more outgoing and always looking to learn and experience something different. And people associate that attitude with younger people. Yeah. So I think that, that's, where, that's where it is, you know? But, um, but I do know that there is a... That a lot of my colleagues have issues, you know. If I say I'll be fifty nine and I'll be sixty next year, they look at me like, "What's wrong with you, girl? <laughs> Keep quiet." <laughs> so, Darren, my my, well, it's not really final, but I know you'll come to me and you'll come back. Is this? Um, I have found too that you hear people at our stage may say. You know, in our days, this didn't happen, and young people of today, et cetera, et cetera. Always kind of looking back to their timing and being critical of what is happening now with the, with the youths. How do you feel about that? <laughs> well, like you said the other day, I am not the right person to answer that question. No, and that's why I'm asking you, and maybe that's why you have that attitude. Um... I just wish people would leave the young people alone. I, I don't, quite frankly, I was a far more rebellious 20-year-old um, and teenager than my boys are and their friends are. Um, I, I, think, I think the young people are doing what young people do. And depending on how you've been brought up, you're on the good side, the bad side, the in-between side, but they all give their trouble and whatever it is. But generally, given what they're exposed to, the use of technology, the, the way they live, the way they socialize, I see our young people as a cohort. Okay. I, I can't wait for them to take charge because I think in many instances, a lot of our leaders now need to transition, get off the stage, find it to that, stop holding on and let some fresh air in. Um, and sometimes I think, Jennifer, that when, when older people spend time just blanket criticizing young people, I usually look to see if there's a bit of regret and a bit of, um, you know, I, I'm so upset I can't still be there. Mm -hmm. doing those you really things. wonder, yes. Yeah. You know, and I say, there's so much more for you to do Look at what we're doing. I mean, <laughs> yeah. So I I say leave the young people, guide them, um, be open for them to come and ask questions and talk to you, uh -huh. and give your opinion. Listen, they will absorb it, and then and Jennifer, they they looking at us and they're learning, you know. And if yes. you watch carefully, they they are following. They they still in. Uh -huh need and, and they do respect us they do you know and I, I i would not use the minority fringe to to blanket no no i, I love them <laughs> i love them okay well terry Ann and friday we will be toasting to welcome you onto the other stage <laughs> yeah <laughs> i'm excited we have, we have a whole year 12 months and we, each month <laughs> it will be a different step onto that stage. And then balloons and firecrackers on December yes. 2021. <laughs> I <Yeah>. arrived. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Thank you, Jennifer. That was yes. wonderful. Now, Jennifer, in April, April, yeah. mm -hmm. you are going to be 69. Now, that yes. number. But we're not going there. We're not, we're not going there. Family show. <laughs> yeah. But you are about to enter the 70s. Now, people will fuss about 60s, but still, you know, we see so many people in their 60s still active and so on. But the 70s is the, oh, that's really the one before when you're finished. Yep. How, what, what is your main emotion? Um, knowing that you're turning 69 in April and the way time is going, something will soon be upon you. Actually, Terri-Ann, when you said we will speak about age, although I don't 
have an issue with age. I still had a little mm, thinking, gosh, everybody will say she's so old, which is, which is something, you know, they normally, um, you will hear. But I have no hang up about it. And that is because those I look up to, my, I have, let me tell you, many of my friends already reach 70. So I think that that's it. And I don't see a difference in them. Now at 70 plus, as when they were in the 60s, yeah. I, I really don't see. And maybe I have that advantage because they're all still working, doing active in one way or the other. Um, so I'm thinking of those. And those who have retired, not retired, as they say, not home in terms of before in a rocking chair. But we do so many things together. And they're still very active, giving back, doing things. And we discuss, I mean, the, the, the conversation we have hasn't changed. Um, even health-wise, I don't see the difference with, with us right now. <laughs> we, we have our same sort of challenges. We, we sort of, um, we are very conscious about health, etc. Mm -hmm. So my thinking now is that, you know what, I actually set out not too much of when I reach 70 or that. I always do a 10-year plan in my life. Okay? So that's how I live my life. So right now, which is 60 to 70, I am continuing with that plan, which is, of course, to stay healthy um, as much as I can. Whether it's, it's corona, not always try and remain healthy with exercise, the what I eat, etc. So I'm very conscious of health and will remain so until yeah. 70s okay. to 80s. Okay. I, okay. Yes. Have I have accepted the fact, Terry Ann, that we can all die at any time. You could be young, you could be old, so it doesn't mean because you are 70 plus or 80, you're going to drop down. You could be 30, you could be 20, anything can happen. Mm -hmm. So I'm not living my life with the fear that you're going to just get this sort of, of illness and, and then you can't do anything and you'll drop down. No. I live with a lot of faith and hope. Um, you want the best, so I put things in place. So we spoke about making sure I'm healthy. My mindset, I, I, my life has to be happy. So I want to enjoy the things I love. And that has nothing to do with age. <laughs> what I love to do has nothing to do with age. It is about enjoying life. I love socializing. You know, you go into the different place, etc. And all the things I love doing, I do it. Mm -hmm. You know, I do it. I don't allow, obviously, you would have constraints and people say, what about money? And Money is not an issue because the things I love to do, I don't have a price tag onto it. Yeah. So, so I am I'm good at that. I also, I look at my spirituality. Mm -hmm. I firmly believe in my God and, and do my prayers, etc. I, um, so I'm, I'm satisfied with that. Um, I'm about family. Mm -hmm. So, and I do, I have my two grands and two daughters. Yeah, so <laughs> I, part, I want to put aside time and I have no problem in put aside, to put aside that time to be with family or extend myself when I choose to, mm -hmm. to, to help. Because when they are happy, I'm happy. And, and my goal is to be happy. Um, so I look at that, I would say um, relationships. So for me, we building really good relationships. I have, I mean, I will say it all the time. I have fantastic friends. Mm -hmm. Those relationships, I have a nice core group who understand. And again, it's not about age. I have those who are younger and I have those who are older. When we sit and chat, it's not about, you know, our conversation is we're all on the same page, you know. Um, it is important for me also to keep active, 
to give back um, and Connect Channels 50 Plus allows me to do that. I love it. I mean, we work together. We can chat here. You know, our followers can, you know, they can gain from the conversation. I just love it. Mm -hmm. So those, as I said, I have those categories that say next 10 years and it will carry on. This is my life. Yes. This is how I live my life. And there isn't an age limit mm -hmm. to it. Um, Persons looking at me and saying, oh, she, well, I, I don't even say that because I remember many times when I chat with my, my children about something and, or they may make a remark about, oh gosh, that person old and look how they're thinking. And I will say, watch them out, you know, this is my age group. And I say, no, mommy, not you. You don't think like that. To me, that's a compliment. Yeah. Because I am very open. Similar to you, Terry, and I'm not about knocking the youth to say in my days, in my days. I had a great, my days were great. <laughs> I had a great life. I still have a great life. Anything that may not have gone as it should, to me was an experience and you learn from it. I am not, I don't look at it with, with hate or regret. It's not about that. I look at it and say, thank God I experienced that. So it helps me in terms of decision making as I move forward. And even better as a coach, I could relate and empathize with others depending on, the, on, on their situation and with my experience to help them, you know, move forward and get that breakthrough. So I am a happy, happy 60, late 60 plus heading on to the 70 stage without any issues you know the Jennifer you know I you have generational cohorts and you look and I'm excited going on to 60 because I think that okay now I can in, in that time I, that's when I can really create what is what is mine and and you know you get into building legacy things like that and I, I look at your life and it, it's, there's so many parts, so many elements. If you were to write a book or the chapter name, just naming the chapters <laughs> would be. So, so yeah, I'm going to ask you two questions. And the first one will be, if you think of your granddaughter, Zuri, and your grandson, Z, yeah. okay, this life that you've left to them, what is the legacy that they are going to get, they, they would get from Granny Jen's 70 years. So I'm taking you to the door of 70. So when you yeah. end up the first year from Granny Jen's 70 years of existence. My legacy for them would be one of value. I would like for them to, you know, to come from me, watching my life, that appreciate people, not to be judgmental, but to be kind. And um, wherever they can help make someone's life better, that they can do that. Um, so it would be about a value, it would be about values, about honesty, the tradition, well I shouldn't say traditional, the, the values that I grew up with and I appreciate. That have been there for oh, us. And that has shaped me into who I am today. And, and those are the values actually when I do something or, or I get a compliment in a certain way, I recall my parents. So my parents, my mom's still alive, as you know, would have been 99 soon. My dad died at 93. And their core values of kindness and honesty and how we treat people. And, and working hard for what you, you, for what you want, not depending on anybody, because I have been working on my own for forever. <laughs> and they have to appreciate that. They can do things and earn the, the income based on the effort that they put out. Yes. And so, so those, as I said, it will be more the values. I would love them to see my, that legacy of values. Okay. So Jennifer, my last question to you is this. So 
we're going to launch a book for your 70th birthday. And Sounds great. Write in the book for your 12 months. <laughs> If you were to name the first chapter and the last chapter of that book, what's the titles of those chapters? The first chapter will be Jennifer's journey from, from childhood. So I will say Jennifer's journey from childhood to adulthood. <laughs> so the first chapter will be the journey from childhood. So we're going into the different stages. So we started with the childhood. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. no? So your chapters will be the stage of stages. Yes. Ah. Yes. And what will be, what will be the, the last, uh, what will the, the, the essence of the closing paragraph be? Given that you're still alive, you're just doing up to 70. <laughs> you know, my closing paragraph will always be a paragraph given hope. Yeah. Hope and with a vision. I, I, I mean, I believe in visioning. I know that is what would keep me moving forward. So the close of each chapter would be sharing, would be about, okay, I have done that. The experience was good. We have hope for the again for the future, mm. and it goes. So it would be one of hope. Yeah, yeah. It will be a bestseller. It will definitely be a bestseller. Actually, <laughs> I have a very good friend who not now for years. Every time she, Jennifer, you must write a book. And to me, write a book about what? She said, "You don't know. You have done so many things." Yeah. Well, that's good. That's, that's a compliment. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, may start doing that. Yeah, great, great. No, I think it is great that we, we are where we are, you know? So I, I, I really am, I, I, I think your life is, is one that can certainly be emulated. It's not been yes. all, all fun and glory and, and, and no. skills. There have been challenges, and I think, with both of us. And I think one of the things that people have to, understand is life is the, the journey the journey, the journey. Uh -huh. the window and enjoy the view even when what's outside the window may not be what you want to see still look at it and and deal with it don't don't run off hiding you know so yeah i i really believe terry Ann, from the stage of stages from one stage whichever stage you are moving on to the next stage you must have that faith, that belief in yourself and that faith, looking always for that positive aspect, you yeah. know, mm -hmm. of life. Because what keeps us back and keeps us in that state of, of you know, you feeling maybe angry and disappointed and you're just wishing, wishing. No, look forward, you know, paint that picture of how your life, you want your life to be at that stage mm -hmm. with all that fear that it wouldn't happen yeah, yeah and just keep moving forward and that is where i think you know that we both of us can be happy at the stage we are and happy moving on to the other stage yeah you know you know yeah there's always something in the future so yes. <laughs> so jen let's talk now about us and moving on to our movement, our connections 50 plus. And I want to talk, I want to talk about this experiment, which is just under two years old, coming off of two very different professions, professional tracks, and so on. And we were talking the other day, um, asking, how different are we? How different are we compared to other people? Because some people look at us and they say, wow, you all are doing stuff. You all on TV. You all coming up with all kinds of things. And wow, you brave. Or you. And we're looking and saying, are yeah. we extraordinary? 
uh, what is what causes us to be here doing this program um do we have a different dna strand um wh what's the difference compared to other people who may may hope and want to do something but just don't seem to be able to get there and end up looking on but not doing what they want to do Darian, i would base it i would go with the comments i've received i prefer go with that repeating what others have said you know um so i would get comments like you know you're all very brave or to me so let me use you know what they will say to me so a friend will say you know jennifer i'm not as brave as you are and i said what is the difference we both you know well you know you do some things that um i can't do so when i hear that and the things I'm doing that they can't do, it's not that they can't do, they don't want to take that chance to fail. Whereas I, when I believe in something and I go by what I do is to help others, mm -hmm. all right? So my goal is to help others, help people, make a better, life, help them, you know, live a better life in whatever way I can. So if I'm going with that thinking, I'm not going, I'm not thinking of feeling. What is there to feel? Yeah. Because I am going with that person's agenda. And, and probably that's why I'm a coach. And I went into coaching. Mm -hmm. So so that would be one, would make a difference. It's, it's my, my reason of moving forward, reason for doing things. So coming with us coming together, and making it work is because we have that same sort of thinking. We are making people's lives better. Mm -hmm. So what are we feeling in it? Is have no failure. We are doing this program and we are chatting, ex you know, talking about how we are feeling. What is there to feel? We don't expect everyone to agree with us, but we know there are people outside there that we are making a difference in their lives. Yeah. All right, so I just want to use that one example about um, when they say you're going brave or you're doing something that we wouldn't do. The willingness to step out, but with a good purpose. Yeah, yeah. And I think for me, people would look at, um, because as we always say, we, 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 we operate very differently, but still yeah. much the same. <laughs> I don't know. One time, one will be visionary, the other one will. Anyway, yeah. Um, the thing is, I, I I say to people, will say, but how you got that? How, how you reached there? How did you? We were all standing in this point, and all of us yeah. were way over there. How did you get there? You know, and um, I think sometimes the way my mind works, I will see we'll be in a current situation, and we will all talk about what we really want to be and what we really want to do. Mm -hmm. And um, I find that people sometimes just don't want to take that step. Even if the thing you want to get to is a thousand steps away, most people focus on the thousand steps or the, the thousandth step. They don't think yeah. about the first or the hundredth or the mm -hmm. ninth. They think about the thousand step, and that's a stretch. But for me, I look at it as a thousand steps away, and I see all the interims, and I go to the next one that's closest to me. And then I go to the next one that's closest. And all of a sudden, I look back, and I say, but hey, I finished 300 steps already. So now it's just 700 steps. And we keep going. And I think, and then sometimes when I get to... I have 400 steps again. Yeah. I see the thousand step beyond there. And it seems as though that I'm going at a rate in terms of making things happen. But I think if people, people may look, look at us and say, wow, we're different, we're whatever it is. I, I, don't, I don't think that I also am different to any other person. I have the fears, I have the uncertainties, I have the anxieties. It's a lot of risk that you're taking. But I am a firm believer in managing risk, and I take the first step. I'm not yeah. to 
take the first step and the first step leads you to the second and the third and the fourth yeah. and when you look up you see you're much closer to the goal and when you look back you see how far you've come you feel great and then you go again and the other um, thing to terry and sorry let me just mm -hmm. came to mind yeah is that being open to receive um and i don't want to say criticism no to, re to listen to someone else's opinion mm -hmm. and not feel you're always right yeah mm -hmm. and um so i would also hear that you know jennifer well you know what you listen you just give them an a and maybe that's why you know and i'm saying allow listen allow that person to share their face when you cut them short make them feel bad maybe just your reaction you're not allowing them to to grow you know let me put it that way and you have and you cannot be selfish you cannot be selfish because when they grow it helps everybody you you know they say you you build up someone um and that may come terry and again with us and and personality traits and mm -hmm. personality traits so again our mission our goal what both of us want at connection is to help and move persons from one stage to the other yeah, yeah. and for us to do that we have to understand where they are and be willing and and if we can't do it which is what we do provide means and bring on board you know professionals who can help that is something that i have found and again referring to when and i'm just dealing with when friends or persons make those comments and you ask them and you may hear saying well i don't do that because they don't know what they're doing or i am observing how they're moving and i don't like how they're moving and it moves terry and it could be a different fate so they may think that person value system is not the same because we belong to a different faith you know things like that which blocks that growth and we are not about that yeah we are not about that so that for those our followers who are listening persons may have that type of issue by judging and allowing other things to get in the way you know their beliefs and and certain yes yeah, a value but what is the value it dependent you know on what you look at yeah so yeah so that that is one thing we we don't put blocks in the way we remove the blocks and i think i think one of the things that um and again it's and this is just to address the people who look at us and figure oh, wow they, yeah. they're doing something that i can't do the when we think back to the amount of people we reach out to to bring yes. in to support and carry us this is not jennifer and Terry at all yes. mm -hmm. different stages wherever we realize that we we know we need help and i always i always remember in the early days when we started this <laughs> and we didn't know what we got up four o'clock in the morning to let yes. Blackman teach us what is facebook what is instagram yeah what is twitter <laughs> having people being open as you say so you know people people look at us and they say but you you're achieving your dreams you you're living a charmed life and, and i say to people what is your dream and and what's stopping you and and very often they they stay focused on that big thousand mile marker and yeah. of course you don't have everything you need to be at the, it's a thousand miles away. You are at point one. It's a thousand miles away. And they go on with all the things they don't have or need to get there and help. When those things just provide a list of people that you can then reach out to, to help you, to get you going, you know? So I, I would want to say that you, you, we, we talk about collaboration and we talk about our yes. partnership that you, 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 you can't make your dreams come true alone. <laughs> That's it. 
And you know, Terry, and the other thing, and we mentioned earlier when you were speaking about the youth, that we collaborated our, you know, those are the assessors. They are young. They are in their, they just started very early 40s or late 30s, you know, early 40s. We had no problem because we knew they understood think that they are professionals. Yeah. They, this is their, their area of expertise. And you have to be willing to let go. You know, we speak about that a lot. And I, that is one of the, the strengths for Connections 50 Plus. We yeah. don't think we know it all, mm -hmm. you know, but we have that one mission and one goal. And those that we collaborate with, they fall into that same category. Definitely. So it's not that things are perfect and um, they say, look, Jennifer may be smiling a lot or happy all the time. No, but this is my goal to be happy. Why should I not dwelling on that negative energy? And we talk about energy. Mm -hmm. Yes, when you go wrong in the negative energy, I find things to make the back energy up. high. Find a way back out. <laughs> and I'm talking to you and I'm seeing the red behind me, Terry Ann, and I know it's Christmas. <laughs> and every time I see some red and some piece of something lighting up, it, yeah. it lights me up. Absolutely. You know? Absolutely. Uh, you know? No, I, I think I think that that is part of our maturing process. Call it yes. gotcha, call it whatever it is. I think it's it's like a fruit on a tree and, and that's the way it is, you know, the, the fruit is green. You don't want to be a false right person. And and the thing about it is that Every fruit has its, its path, the plate. It starts with yes. that flower, it grows out, it's young, it, it buds up, it fills out, it gets to its peak of sweetness, then it, 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 it ripens, it can yield a seed that can turn into a tree mm -hmm. and can go on and on and on. And I just think people need to, to really give themselves permission to yeah. step on that journey and not think that, you're going to fall off into an abyss if you leave one stage of life yeah. and you go into the other. Because you just think of, think of a flower, think of a fruit. It, it, it continues, it goes on and, and so much more is ahead of you. And I, I just think that that, that mindset, I think, yeah. you know, for me, entering my 60th year by turning 59, <laughs> I tell you, I have a real problem with this last year. You know? <laughs> I want to go on the boat for free. <laughs> but entering to that year, I think the fruit has come to, to full maturity or the flower is blossoming. And I don't for a minute think that afterwards that there's any debt or decay afterwards. There's renewal. So when the fruit comes yeah. to maturity, that seed is ready to go and create something else and spring up again somewhere else. And I, I just think that that is excellent. And, and I look at us in our different yeah. stages, and I am just so very proud of what we have done and, and, and where we are. I just can't help but really be you proud know, of myself. I see, see us, and, and this is my goal, and when we, we formed um, Connections 50 Plus, I rarely see us creating these stages so people are going to be very happy to come on on that stage and um if they use us as as, as mentors as you see to say well yes yeah help us you know and this is what we're there for to help people on the different stages yeah. um for me this is i feel so fulfilled about that because um I see us Terrianas, and I may say that because I'm being told that, that we are pioneers, you know, for this new, these new stages, the new 60, the new 70, the new 50, mm -hmm. you know? So I, I love this stage of stages. I love where we are. Um, and I just looking forward for us to continue. And let me tell you for 2021, <laughs> ah, we have so much to tell you about. Next we week. are so excited, you know, um, to get you on board. 
and for those of you all on board are ready to bring others on board let me put it that way especially the those who are now going on to the 50s in the early 50s so the 40s the late 40s ah uh, yeah yeah so you all will be excited to reach 50 like how Terrian is excited to reach 60. <laughs> Okay, Darian. So yes, definitely, definitely. So Jennifer, we chat and chat and chat and, and it's now fifty-eight minutes. All is okay. Is so we're saying bye now. Yes. <laughs> but I, I want to thank you. I, I really, really yeah. do enjoy this. I think that the not only because I'm going into to fifty-nine. I think it's it's it, God's plan for our life is always whatever. Mm -hmm. Oh yes. I think if we just open ourselves, the person who will journey with us to get us to where we need to be is there and they'll show up and they'll come on board. And I think this is what has happened. This is a dream coming true. And I I, I think you you so I'm getting to 60 and I'm going to join that club and have a great time. And look at mm -hmm. I think 70 is going to be even more. <laughs> oh, yes. I'm excited on what you have a stage. As I said, it's, it's, it's continuous to me. Yeah. You know, it's just continuous. So, yes. this is it. Thank you, everyone. Yes, and all those who chase, shift in from one stage to the other, please let us know how you're doing. Definitely. And we are here to help. What are your issues? What's stopping you from yes. jumping to the stage and moving? And before we close, we tell you, please. Tune in. Some phenomenal things are happening. We are we are, are going on to some new projects, and we would love you to be part of an event that's going to happen next Thursday. But we'll tell you all about it next Wednesday, yeah. um, <laughs> where connections and our work, where our work is going, and we really want you to be a part of it. So, happy birthday to me! I'm going to have a ball on Friday. Doing really simple things. We're going to hang out by Jennifer's backyard and <laughs> socially distance party. <laughs> yeah, and I, I will take pics to share with you all. <laughs> I am not good at singing, so I'll just say, Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. What tone is that? Happy birthday, happy birthday, happy birthday to Terrian. And her birthday is Friday. <laughs> but then I will have others who will sing along with me, very small social distancing, etc. Just enough time to give a toast. Yes. yes. And we want to say a belated happy birthday to another very, very good friend of ours. Oh, Errol. Errol. Yes. Who was 60 Sunday, Lita, Sunday, I think he was 50 on Sunday. Errol entered that stage. So all mm -hmm. of them got there before me. So I want to get there too. So happy birthday, Errol, and, and we'll continue this journey. So you all hold us accountable. Every month next year, we're going to be looking. So I'm going to have my 12 months, then Jennifer is going to have her 12 oh, yes. And all As I, I outlined my journey already and told you all what would make me happy throughout the journey. <laughs> okay, so. Okay, so we say bye for now. Everyone. Yeah. 50 plus tribe and followers from TNT and the Caribbean. Thank you for joining us on this Connections 50 plus Wednesday Alive show. We hope you enjoyed the lively conversation and look forward to seeing you next week. Don't forget to like and share our Facebook page and subscribe to our YouTube channel. We really love getting your feedback. Bye for now.